everyone. Welcome to an awesome, uh, uh, another awesome day of FileMaker training. I'm Richard Carlton, creator of FMTrain.tv. It's one o'clock here in California on the East Coast, West Coast, uh, and it's probably a different time wherever you're at. Um, so, <laughs> welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. So, real quick, upcoming broadcast schedule. If you go to FMTrain.tv, you press the live button here over here on the left you will uh, see the upcoming broadcast schedule. This feeds straight out of FileMaker, out of a FileMaker custom application. We use FileMaker to run the broadcast. It's so awesome. So this is the upcoming broadcast for today. We're doing Anchor Buoy Relational Design Day 2. We've covered Day 1 yesterday. It'll be a quick recap, recap some of the more uh, awesome questions that we had from yesterday, uh, some revelations, etc. So today is Anchor Buoy Day 2. Um, so Carol says, I think I answered my question from yesterday. If there are two, okay, so we're going to go right into that in a second. I want to do a little bit of more low hanging fruit on this. So you see the upcoming broadcast schedules right here. Um, and Jacob will pick up tomorrow next week. Exciting. Cause we got two days of Jacob's emergency procedures. We're in the aircraft, right engine blows up and we're still flying the aircraft. We want to get all the passengers on the ground. How do you do that? You take out your emergency checklist. You start working through the checklist with your co-pilot. So next week, Jacob is the pilot. I will be his trusty co-pilot, right? Jacob sound good. Yep. Absolutely. He bobs his head up and down excessively. Cool. All right. So let's talk a little bit about real quick. So uh, all this content that you're seeing here is free. Reminder that if you would like, I run to people. They're like, oh, everything I learned, I learned on YouTube. You don't know enough. You need a coherent, coherent, sequential, organized training package. And you can get that by going to the same gnarly website that we had just a second ago, fmtrain.tv. Instead of pressing the live button, you come over here and press the bundle button. Get the annual training. It's all our coherent training, logically pre-recorded and animated. It's great. This is a great conversation. People text and talk to me here as long as they stay on topic. It's very exciting. However, when people go off topic, then I will I work to ignore you, right? So as soon as people start talking about, you know, some sort of uh, JSON, custom function, whatever, then it's going to be like, because that's not what today is. Today is decidedly for beginners and intermediate people. It's not for advanced people. Uh, the advanced people should already know about this. If they don't, then they're probably screwing up and they may not be very good advanced developers. So uh, once again, it's uh, things that you should know already. In fact, I got this really uh, email from this Nice lady. Um, it's kind of funny. I think it almost felt like her name was very similar to Amy's last name. It was like spelled slightly different with a Y instead of an E. And she was very <clears throat> unhappy because she found my book and was reading it and realized she had woven herself into a corner in a bad way, painted herself in a corner. And and I'm like, oh my gosh. And so she needs some coaching and she's built this FileMaker solution and she's got all this other experience, but she got stuck with doing FileMaker and then she literally built herself into a corner. So it's a good place to come and have a conversation. We can try to help you out as well. So let's talk about uh, today's topic of Anchor Buoy. So yesterday I'm going to do this kind of quick as a recap for those of you just kind of sliding in here. Um, Anchor Buoy is a method for organizing the relationship graph. Um, it's basically, if you're a beginning and intermediate developer, you should just use this period. If you're an advanced developer and you care about the people around you, you should probably still use this. Um, if you care about the people who come behind you, uh, definitely use this or something very, very similar to this. Welcome, Amon from Egypt. Welcome. Yep, 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 absolutely. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this and I'm going to jump back to Carol's question as I after I summarize this. So here is the way this works. So I'm going to click over here on this and it's about context. So the context is in FileMaker. When you have a layout in FileMaker, that layout is attached to a table occurrence on the graph. All these little boxes over here, these are table occurrence. They're not the table. We talked about this yesterday. What is a table occurrence? It's a representative of a table. It's basically like the table's attorney. If you have a contacts table, you the how many if you're the contact, I'm the contact. We remember that we had this conversation yesterday. I'm the contact. Uh, how many attorneys can I have? As many as I want to hire so I could have a whole bunch of attorneys. That run. So these are basically attorneys running around over here. And they may, multiple, may represent the same person or same company, right? And so 
That's what we're talking about. We're talking about not the actual table. We're talking about representatives of that table. And because you put them on different spots on the graph, they can do different things. Like I could have an attorney that does copyright law. And I could have an attorney that does trademark law. And I have, could have an attorney who does compliance with California regulations or some sort of, you know, I probably need an attorney just for that in California, right? So anyway, you get the idea that they can do different jobs. So, so, so people were confused that, the relational diagram, they think it's an entity relationship diagram where you have the tables and you kind of draw this map. It's not that way in FileMaker. It's not that way in FileMaker. So understand that A, a layout connects to a table occurrence. Not the table, a table occurrence. So, one, so a layout connects to one box on your graph. One box and one box only. Okay. So let's talk about that a little bit. So context is key. So if we have a layout based upon this box right over here, and we'll get into this more, but it can only see whatever's connected to it. That's all it can see and talk to. That's a really important thing, right? Because as you build a solution initially, your initial design is like, oh, I'm just going to do this, and I'm going to do this. And then, then you get a little success, and you start building more and more and more. And before long, you keep adding and adding and adding, and you get the spider mess over here, and your little brain is going to look like Lego person over here, very confused and very chaotic. Um, and so... Uh, the context is key. So understanding that the layout attaches to the table occurrence, which is like the att little attorney person, your layout is attached to that attorney, and that attorney can only see what's connected to it. It can't see anything not connected to it. So uh, why is this important, right? So if I hit the plus button here, there's an animation that we showed yesterday. This is FileMaker attempting to process all the attorneys at once. Why? Because we're on a layout connected right here and for it to actually process and show you the layout it has to connect and calculate almost all of these it causes it to spin it wastes all sorts of time it's a very painful process it's called it causes slow performance so a spider diagram is what happens if you don't try to keep it's like if you never clean your house and you just keep throwing stuff in your house your house is a spider diagram it's a mess no one can understand where you saved anything no one understands where the important paperwork is as and the performance of you living in the house is very unsanitary unsafe and it's very slow and nasty and so the idea is that you kind of clean as you go and that's what you get to when you start to do anchor buoy anchor buoy is where you decide that i have a contacts layout okay good Therefore, it has to talk to a contacts TO. Got it. That is the anchor right here. And then, on, so we have that layout, and then we decide all the items that we need to support that uh, layout. All the items, like I want this field, and I want this portal, and I want these related records. And you, and you connect just the items that you need to see. Just the items you need to see. And so, well, what if... Uh, what if we, uh, we don't want, you know, what if something's over here, like a note is over here, and I also need notes down here? You can have more than one attorney. You can, the notes can be in there more than once. A contact can be in more than once. Like I'm in contacts down in here in this section down here, but contacts is over here and over here and over here if necessary. But the goal is that we don't connect everything, right? So the idea is that as a developer, if you use Anchor Buoy, you go into the relationship graph, you can find real simply what layout you're attached to and you can see what's connected to it it's very simple because it's not connected to the whole graph who wants to unpack the spider diagram right who wants to unpack that and we talked about it yesterday if you're a developer and you are going to work on a solution and someone else is going to come behind you and you want to provide value to your customer and you don't want to unnecessarily just trash and hose your customer for fun and entertainment, then you need to comment your scripts. You need to document what you're doing. You need to use Anchor Buoy or something similar to this. Um, that way we all know what's going on. Say you don't care about anyone else in the world. You only care about yourself. Fine. In a year or two, you're going to come back to a solution. You'll forgot what you did. If you left breadcrumbs on how you did stuff and you could see things, then you would understand it yourself. So you're helping yourself out, either helping someone else or you're helping yourself out. Very, very important. So if I go through here, uh, once again, different layouts, you'll understand what's going on. Instead of being confused, you will be awesome. You will uh, understand what's going on. So this is the idea right here. So if you have a layout that's connected here, this is your, this is your uh, anchor, right? then or this you're on a layout right here i'm going to pause it real quick right here then filemaker only has to spin and process just these right here 
just these right here. So your layout's connected here. We put all the supporting stuff right, uh, supporting uh, table occurrences for the related data that we need just for that layout. Okay, very important. And I think this is where Carol came in on your question yesterday. Um, I think I answered my question. If you're two togs, the same uh, base table. Yeah, so, so this is a table occurrence group. This is a table occurrence group. If you cross connect them, it's no longer, sorry, I'm over here hiding. Uh, it's no longer two groups, it's one. So I have a, I made a video just for you, Carol, right? So here we go. So remember that the less that FileMaker has to do, the faster the performance will be. So the less thinking it has to do. So the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and click back over here. Here's the next video. So let's say that we, oh, I just completely, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna close this out real quick. I'm gonna find the video. Where'd this one go? Spider this one right here. So I'm going to, that way I can control a little bit better. So here we go. This is for you, Carol. So this is you. So we say that, so, so Carol was like, well, say I'm on a layout over here, right? And it doesn't matter. It's invoice light items or whatever it is. And say that I really want to talk to things over here. Like there's this, 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 uh, this, uh, relational, this TO right here. I'd like to talk to it. So I could like, cross connect these and yes you could but understand that right now filemaker is just processing these that you see on the screen if you cross connect it it's not going to j get just the one it's going to get the whole mess of them so if you see something over here that you really want you need to take it duplicate it copy it rebuild it over here do not cross connect these because you just hosed your performance okay uh additionally it, it makes as you interact in filemaker it makes things much um much less exciting so let me show you what i'm talking about there's other benefits to anchor buoy besides what we've talked about i'm going to close that screen i'm going to open up filemaker i want to see not starting point what i want to i want to see starting point recent i mean the regular starting point here we go so this is the regular starting point right here if i go to contacts right here okay so let's just so let's just, let's just pretend that we hired carol to work for rcc carol's never been here before but she paid attention to our anchor buoy so Carol, I go, Carol, we have a new version of starting point coming out. I want you to go add some stuff to it. I want you to go to the contacts data entry screen, Carol. I want you to add some stuff in there, right? Make for me, make sense. And Carol goes, ah, except that she watched our training. So she goes, okay, I'm going to go to layout mode. And I'm going to come over here on this top. And I see that it's connected to a table of occurrence called TO5 contacts. That is my attorney, right? It's my anchor, right? So then we go file manage database up comes a relationship graph and then we look for to5 there's to1 we're going to get into naming conventions a little bit we're going to talk about that um to2 to3 and i do see a question i'll come back to that in a second and here's to5 so then we know we know we know absolutely that one that this table occurrence chart right here is one of the bigger ones uh it's only this is the entire group right here and this, and this layout is attached to that, which means that layout can see these items. So if I come over here, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. I'm gonna say cancel. I'm gonna bring out a field on the layout here. Let me see if I can do this correct. I'm gonna bring down a field, doesn't matter where it goes. Let's put it over here. And then, and then this pops up right here. This is super useful. I say, well, I don't need to see a field out of the contacts. I need to see a related field. Now, what you have, here is the whole one of the holy grails of why you do anchor buoy. You see the related items, okay? If you had this spider diagram, you would see the entire list from hell. Carol, you would be in hell, okay? It would be horrible. You would be very despondent. You would call the suicide hotline. It would be very bad. Um, and I'm kidding, of course, but maybe not. The point is, is that instead of having a really gnarly long list that is gonna cause you all sorts of stress and unhappiness, you have a very short list because these items right here happen to match, guess what, that very small list that we had um, over here. So TO5 is right here. That list corresponds to these right here. And if you had a very small group like these, right, like say you're on uh, documents, then you have four whole related items. So much easier, so much better. Life is so much better for you, your computer, your performance, your customers, if you use Anchor Booty, if you use Anchor Booty, it would be awesome. So there is a question. Ms. Colombo, Mrs., Mrs., Mrs. Colombo. So each table occurrence is just a visual representation of the code that uh, is a table occurrence is a visual representation. It's a visual representation 
of a table and it's in a specific spot on the diagram with specific relationships connecting to it. So I think you're pretty much there. And each time we make a new relationship between two table occurrence, it's like us writing code. Okay, so this is kind of like that low code, no code kind of conversation. If you're writing SQL and you were doing all this, this is all known as the graphical right here. And then and then you double click it and you say, I want this field to match this field over here. Sorry about that, I can't see myself around the box. Hello? Hi, I'm around the box. Right, so the window. So you're doing it graphically right here. You're not coding anything. If you're writing an Oracle system or SQL system or whatever you're using, yeah, you'd be like writing lines of code. Connect this, build this table, do this. And some of you people in here love the code in here. They love the code, and that's not what today is about. Today is about understanding the visual graph and not having to code. You know why we don't have to use code? Hello. You know why we don't have to code? Because we use FileMaker, and it's awesome. Any questions? Okay, they want me to show that again. Okay, so let me show the... That's a good one. So if I click on... I can't remember how it works again. So if I click on, like... Um, like preferences is a good one. Like preferences connects to a lot of stuff. Let me go find, where did preferences at? Wasn't here at the top? Documents, estimates, expenses. Where's preferences at? Payments, assets, timesheets, pro there's preferences. If I click on that and I hit command, is it command U? U, is that what it was? Everyone, command U. Did I do that right? I did, it did work right. Okay, so what it does, kind of hard to see it right here. But it highlights this. There's this fluorescent green track around here. You kind of, kind of hard to see. Let me move this other way. See the? If I click on this, you see that little fluorescent-y kind of thing. Let me see if I can zoom in more. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It makes it like really kind of goofy, stupid. So see like the green glow of you know Superman's kryptonite. If I click on that and I hit Command, or if I go back to my regular tool, I click on that and I hit Command U. It finds all the matching ones that are similar, I think. Isn't that how that works? Yeah, there's one right there. So it's preferences right there. So it shows you where preference is at. So it's telling you where all the same base table is at. So there's a terminology that Claris uses intermittently called base table, and that is the official list of tables, right? That's the official list of tables. So if we come over here, click on this, these are the list of tables. So contacts is in here, preference is in here. Each of these actual base tables like a real real sql table kind of idea have multiple representatives on the relational diagram they could have one they could have none technically i think but um most of them will have more than one makes sense yeah so cool that is handy dandy trick i really like that trick it's very good so questions that we have thank you yeah so this is really good stuff so Let's talk about mm, Agent Chevy and Kyle are going to have a try. Uh, so, simply hit Command O to open it. All right. So there. Okay. Let me, let me go back to relationship diagram. So if we're on preferences and I hit Command O. Okay. Yeah. So you can double click it. Right. So the idea is that double clicking it shows you the base table. So this is the list of base tables that are in this file, right? Once again, we're built, the starting point is our free CRM. For, it's a free sample FileMaker solution. Most of you know about this. And it's, uh, you go to fmstartingpoint.com, put your name and email in and psh, we'll shoot it to you. And um, it is a single file solution because it's easier to manage that. But if you had a multi-file solution, if you wanted a different table from a different file, you come down here and you could say, oh, show me this and show me this or show me this or show me this. So um, anyway, pretty interesting. So, yeah, this is pretty cool stuff. All right, I'm going to say OK. I'm going to hit uh, browse mode. OK, so on topic today, it's pretty awesome. Uh, Carol says she has 90 files in FileMaker 8, total spidery, every one of them. Yeah, so you got to rebuild it. So... Okay, so someone said yesterday, I'm going to try something because it's a little bit, it's on topic, but I'm, I'm just, I don't, mm. so say that we have a layout. I need a, I need something. Let, okay, so let, like, where did the sample file go from? All right, hang on one second, folks. Let me see if I can figure this out. What I want to do is like, if you're trying to convert from a spider to uh, anchor buoy, how you might do that, right? Um, what you need to do is you need to have a copy of the layout, 
the problem is if FileMaker can try to auto attach the names, it will do it. And you don't really want that because I think it makes, in my opinion, more of a mess. Once again, this is one of those kind of sketchy kind of moments. What I could do is go to, I need a sample file like the manifest file or something like that. Lean design, lean design, weather tricks, weather demo. Well, here's one right here. So this is a file. This is a layout. So this is a sample file that Nick created back in FileMaker 12, 13, whatever he did. So well, let's say that this is the, it's got a lot of conditional formatting and stuff like that on it. I don't particularly care about that. But let's just say that this is part of Carol's spider diagram and we want to, <clears throat> We want to more easily reset this. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna copy the whole layout. I'm not gonna try to get overly clever. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna create. Uh, I'm just gonna create a new file briefly here. Um, I'm gonna call, create a blank file. Call it Untitle. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna say OK. I'm gonna go to layout mode over here, and I'm going to paste it. Now what this does is it breaks the linkage because obviously there these fields that were over here don't exist over here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to recopy this. I'm going to bring it back over here into this file right here. Okay. I'm going to create a new layout. I can, uh, oh, good. It's going to go through all this. Awesome. Um, it's attached to contacts. Um, you could paste it in. And so here's the thing. So when you're going to go from a spider diagram to um, a anchor buoy, first is you're going to have to create well, if you have multiple files, you might want to consolidate them together. Carol, you really need a little bit of help with that, okay? Um, unless, because you have to, you should consolidate the files together first and then do this would be my suggestion. I mean, it's like, um, or just, uh, yeah, or just rebuild the solution. I hate to tell you that. If you're talking about file, would you say it was FileMaker 8? Um, yeah, before, not now, thankfully. Yeah, but if you were in FileMaker 8, I would say maybe rebuild it if it's that old. Um, it's certainly, if it's 5 or 6, you'd want to rebuild it. But so what I've done is I paste, um, let me go through the demo here. I paste it in here. These are all broke, right? So I paste it into another FileMaker file where it couldn't identify anything. I brought it back. Now it's broke. Now, if I, here's the trick. If you double click a field, it doesn't even know where to go, but it knows that it's on this table because this table is attached up there. And if I said it's, company it doesn't matter what it is now if i double click the next one it's going to go back that same spot it's not a great demo let me try sticking this in starting point let me go to starting point because starting point is really different so if i go um let's go to just um let me say new layout and starting point let me go this will be and we're going to say let's invoices right so invoices are going to be whatever they are in here here's invoice t12 invoices okay and i say computer it's a form that's great it's blank i paste it in so now we've taken this um it's all uh, i don't have it in the, the top header we only have a body part now if i double click right here it's going to go to the base of invoices and that's great okay and say i select this field right here if I double click the next one, it goes back to invoices. But what if I jump and I jump over here, like say T12A, okay? And I select something here. And say a bunch of these are from T12A. If I double click it, yeah, see, it's it's uh, it's it's knowing. See, when you're an anchor buoy, you get a smaller list, but it's still a list. So you'd have to go back to T12A. You'd have to select the next one. So that's one of the benefits of anchor buoy. You get a much smaller list, a much smaller list list so that is kind of the hassle that you're going to have to deal with um in cleaning up uh yeah yeah also the so so uh, carol says they went to oracle and it was a disaster yeah we get that you know i've seen that quite a few times and i've seen it successful once people go you got filmmaker they're it people right so the, remember we talk about the ic people that don't know anything about FileMaker, but they don't like FileMaker because it's not their chosen product, right? Like, we're going to replace FileMaker. We're going to do it, Oracle. It'll be 10 times better because, you know, we know a lot about, or they'll say Microsoft SQL. You can you can replace Oracle with Microsoft SQL, either one. It's going to be Microsoft SQL. It'll be 10 times better. And so they start trying to build it. And they realize that because FileMaker is really low code, like less code, like much less code, we got a lot farther, a lot faster. And for them to replace what we have, they have no idea, because they're not being very thoughtful about it, 
how how much danger they're into. They start making promises. Yeah, we could build it in a month. And then that becomes six months, and that becomes a year. And before long, they're going to replace your FileMaker system, and it becomes three years, four years, five years. I've seen it done once or twice in 30 years successfully. I hear about this about every 60 days or so. Some, someone's, I'm going to replace it. Because FileMaker, whatever, does not like something about it. It's Apple. We don't like Apple. Or it's too expensive or whatever. So, um, All right, cool. So I'm going to jump back. TK's got a question for me, Matt C. How does Anchor Bay work when you're doing, uh, when you're working with normalized, normalized data? It has nothing to do, uh, Anchor Bay has nothing to do with normalized data, right? Um, you're, you're thinking that somehow the data is not normalized if you're using Anchor Buoy. Normalized data just means that you're, like, you're not repeating. Like, if you have five address fields or five email fields for a customer, you don't have email one, email two, email three, email four, email five. Um, you have a separate table for that. It's, it is, it, there's not really... Let me read the next part of this. I'm struggling with a great example. If I had employees with a status, a, pop, a popular with status table, and my current spider web will connect employee status to want once that uh, with Anchor Buoy. Yeah, see, you see the pro, see here's the, 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 the lot of you are having a fundamental disconnect in 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 that you're thinking that we're creating the table multiple times. We're not. We're not. It's more like a, a almost a little bit like a form view, a little bit, right? Or, or how you restrict. Like you can build a form in, in a SQL system and it can see only limited certain things. That's what a table occurrence group is. You're creating a group and it can only see basic certain things. It can't see everything, right? We want to get away from seeing everything because otherwise it tries to process everything in parallel, makes things very, very slow. Um, once again, okay, so Kyle is talking to Agent Chevy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to completely ignore that conversation. I'm, I'm focused on... Uh, on this question from Matt. So Matt, so I'm talking to you specifically right now. So, so, so I understand the mental disconnect here. I really do. So can I, if you can give me more feedback, I could be helpful to you. Um, and Matt was, where was Matt at? Is he on, on Twitch or where's, or is it up in discord? It was up in discord somewhere. So Matt, I just want to hear discord. So Matt, Matt, are you there? Hello, Matt. So I'm not picking on you. I don't know who you are, Matt, which Matt you are. Maybe you're, uh, I have no idea, but we're not saying duplicate that. Like, 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 for example, you're thinking that every time. Let's just take a look at the relational graph on this file. Well, that's mine. Let's take. Uh, where's the one that Nick? Is this the Nick one right here? Yeah. Let me take a look at this one. Oh yeah, that that's not very useful. That's a whole one thing right there. That's totally useless. All right, so we'll go back to this one right here. <clears throat> this is starting point. This is our CRM. The data is largely normalized, okay? And there's some minor ex uh, exceptions of when it's not. So if I go into File, Manage, Database, and I go to Tables here, you don't see the contact table repeated 12 times, right? You have one contact, and it's one person, and that kind of thing. You could have contact email address, one, two, or a table for that. And because you see contacts over here, multiple times does not mean it's multiple tables it's once you understand it it's really powerful but i think if i was a better trainer i would find another way of explaining this but it's once again kind of like that idea of an attorney if i'm richard and i hire five attorneys and i drop them on here i can't actually let's just say this is a courthouse and i can't be in court only my attorneys can go to court for me let's like say that was your rule some places that's the way it is right well they don't i'm not going to represent myself you have your attorney represent you so you put your attorneys in here your attorneys talk to me all the time they get data from me it's not a problem but i can have five different attorneys doing five different jobs in here in different scenarios but yet i am being represented in each case that makes sense right so uh give me a second i'll find a better example okay we'll come back to matt brutterman says Stu, question it seems like i recall the oldest to is special but i don't recall why um <clears throat> Yeah, I don't. I don't really, really get into that. If if you if you're interested in learning more, well, yeah, the the very first to when you when you so here's here's the deal. Um, it's a little bit okay. If listen, if you folks follow Anchor Buoy as well as we're doing here in Starting Point, you're not going to have a problem. For those of you who are like artists, kind of like Nick level artists, and you want to be like the most precisely correct person that ever lived. When you define, say we define, let's go to tables, let's define 
let's say that we have contact emails, right? So they say that, that, that I have a problem with folks sign, getting starting point and every time they do it, they try to use a different email. And so my system can't tell us the same person, which might seem clever to you, but it causes me to think you're a different person. And then so then you don't get the benefits. You don't get the, the things that I might be giving you otherwise when you play clever email games. But let's just say we have contact email. I'm going to create a table called contact email. I'm going to say in terms, I created it, contact email. It, it puts the default fields in here. I'm just going to delete these for, I don't want to have to explain that to people. I'm going to delete all those. Okay. I'm going to say ID contact. Okay. This will be the ID contact of the person. It's timestamp. What is a timestamp? Text for now. Change. And so this is how we would connect it to contacts, right? So you have contact email. If they have five emails or one email, whatever, this is the number of related records, right? So I say, okay, over here. Uh, or I go back to field definitions. I created it. I come over to relationships. It will be in here in one spot. Okay, so the, you see it dropped one table of currents on the relational graph for me. This one is kind of special. You can't really tell it's special. There's no way of really knowing it's special, but it is kind of special. I don't really want to get into it because people are having a hard enough time understanding this, but if you were going to use like anchor buoy in a bunch of spots, you would want this to be your anchor if at all possible. It tends to help you with the default settings on calculations and things like that. Once again, it's, it's a nicety to have. It's a, uh, from Stu there or whoever asked the question. It's a nicety. Um, it's not anywhere a requirement because if you, when you define fields, you really want to define them from the point of the anchor. And so when you're defining a field, it typically goes back to the very first uh, table occurrence that you created for that specific contact, right? I, 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 getting into this is really a bad idea. This is very much a senior developer conversation, and I'm sure other senior developers are getting excited about that. I don't, I think it's dumb. It's, un, it's very much an unnecessary conversation because you're, 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 when you define and here I am talking about it. If I define a calculation and it comes up with the default um, the default of how you're going to evaluate. Because remember, calculations can evaluate in terms of where they're located, right? They should be located on the anchor. But say you the first one you used in a buoy, the first occurrence you used in a buoy somewhere, the calculation is typically going to default uh, to the first one it's first one it was created so it could be it could when you first come in here it could say oh i'm going to define this over here and you're like that shouldn't be over there it should be up over here right like that it's stupid things like that so i'm not gonna i'm just gonna leave it like that but it has to do with trying to get if you're building as fast as possible and you're trying to be as as fluid as possible this is the opposite of carol who's happy just to get 80 down to one and get it to work um, I wouldn't worry about that it's called primogeniture is that is the kind of term that was thrown around by it back in the day might mention globals are accessible anywhere. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I, well, no, I, I'm gonna just leave that off for now because I don't wanna, um, yeah, I mean, if someone has a specific question about it, but yeah, that's kind of where this is going. I mean, the idea here is to try to get people understanding that there's real benefits to doing this. And listen, if this is your very first solution or you've been doing this for 20 years, you've never heard about this, it's better to learn this than to never have heard it before because it will allow you to be a better developer. No one's ever a perfect developer, but you can be better. You can do your job better. You can document your stuff better. You can lay better uh, breadcrumbs from the people that come behind you. You can uh, do your paperwork better. You can do all sorts of things better. And you make little improvements day by day, right? And that was really uh, useful. Uh, learning Anchor Buoy is a game changer. Yeah, well, it's mostly a game changer because instead of like people go, because people come to me all the time, they go, oh, I, I mean, it's like, it's like, they build something and the stuff's all over everything and it looks like a chunk of rah, 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 rah. and it's just like this and I and they go I don't know what to do it's like it's just like the wild west and it's like I've, like like for example <laughs> you take someone who's grown up in the big city in quotes and they drive a little electric car around the city okay and then I airdrop them out literally in the desert where you can drive in the desert. And they sit there and they don't go anywhere because for, for a while they're very confused because there are no lines for them to go anywhere, okay? I, I, I love all you, but this happens, right? They're like, ah, oh, where can I drive? Anywhere. So then they figure out, oh, I can drive anywhere. So then they drive anywhere and you get this giant spider mess. And then what you have to tell them is that, yeah, there are no lines there, but we have some recommended lines. 
and it would be helpful if you followed them for your own sanity. But if you want to just draw your own do, it was like we, we talked about the boat. So it's like the guy in the ship. So, right, I'm going to play this uh, for you folks one more. Uh, is this in here? Did I lose this? Do I still have this? Oh, this is it. This is so awesome. So this is uh, this is a example of someone who got the keys to the wheel and they were in the ocean and they actually was probably some rules they should follow, but they got in the ocean, they saw it, well, <laughs> since I'm in a big ship and I can drive and do stuff in the desert or leave tracks in it, let me have some fun. And so this is for those of you who haven't seen this. This is the actual. Remember that super tanker that got sideways the other day and like blocked the, basically they clogged the toilet in the Suez Canal and you, no one could move cargo through there. The, the prices of goods are going up because this, this is a uh, playback of the flight data recorder. They have those for ships. And the, watch this. This is about 15, 20. So this is what happens if you don't use Anchor Boot. The ship you're watching is this one right here who just drew this right here. This is not a joke. This is real. So this is what people do when they get no no rules. They're like, hey, drive it like you stole it. So if you drive your FileMic relationship like you steal it, this is what you end up doing, okay? And then you get to an area where you really need to be following kind of like in the lines and you don't know about the lines and you just wedge it sideways and then that's the end of it. So uh, I, I laugh every time I see this because someone got the keys to a, a, a giant container ship and then they drove it like they stole it. It's awesome. So anyway, um, so that is what we're trying to prevent you from drawing uh, 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 inappropriate graphics in here. Uh, question from Stu, how I use TOGS for many different layouts. Um, sometimes the layout doesn't need all the buoys at the point you split your, yeah. So, so the question is back to this diagram here we did for Carol, I'm going to play this video right here briefly. So it's a decision. This came up the other day in some of my stuff. So say that you're over here or, or you have like a really big one, right? Say like, say like you legitimately have a really big, and these are all, this is one. And then you realize that there's performance problems and you have say 50 of them in here. You could break out, you could have two that are say invoice line items. You could break them apart. So then you get the benefit of having one group that processes here. If you jump the layout over here, then it just processes over here. I think that's really smart. We, I had to do that the other day in one of our corporate RCC systems. We broke it apart and I had them. So it was two contacts because we saw that one context I had, it was like 30, a, uh, buoy or anchors on it, buoys on it, 30 buoys. The anchor was contacts, the buoys, there were 30 of them. And I said, let's create a new one, but just give me just the items you need for maximum performance. So that's a good one. Uh, naming your, uh, so let's talk about that before we wander off too far. So the naming conventions real quick. Uh, we're going to go back to this. So this is a document, it's free. Um, this is a document I created basically based upon input. And of course, then every time I give this to uh, my engineering team, then I always have a couple engineers who um, decide that um, that they like some different thing themselves and they try to create their own variation of this and that's fine. Um, the, the goal is that you have some sort of naming convention. And the biggest one here is I say, number your scripts, number your layouts, duh, right? That way I can't t tell you how many customers I had. It has a, they have a layout called print label and then there's print label and then there's print label and then there's four print labels and the computer FileMaker, there's a UUID, a hidden ID for each one, but I don't know what it is. FileMaker knows what it is, but all I see is print label. So I'm horribly confused. It's easier to have a number with relational diagrams. It's even more, a little bit more important. So what we do over here is that we number the, uh, we number the, this, and this is, RCC specific, although you see other people with variations of this, and I'm sure someone is going to come in here and say, I don't do it this way. You'd be better if you did it this way, right? So pick pick something that works for you. Um, uh, someone pointed out that Nick had, uh, did a, uh, con uh, there was a, it was an inconsistency between my document here and the one that Nick had put out. Nick's is like 85 pages. Mine's a little bit simpler. I went for simple because I'm trying to train the new junior staff on how to do this. But basically we do 06 and the name. And then we do 06A, B, C, D. I don't know if you folks can see this over here. It's hanging out over here. Let me zoom in a little bit on that. Let me come right. 
And so what happens is I still put the word documents so we know that it belongs to documents. Um, that's kind of optional, but then I put the, the, the table that, so this tells you where it belongs, right? 06, 06A, all the way down here. It should be A, B, C, D, E, um, or whatever it is. Um, and then this is the actual table it's connected to. So this is actually the, this right here, if you double clicked it, if you could double click it, it would say it's belo it belongs to accounts, right? Makes sense. And then to the right of that, it would give you the relationship that's in play. So you don't have to double click necessarily on the uh, dialog right here to pop it to see that, right? So if I go, let me zoom back out a little bit. I think it's documented in here a little bit. Yeah, hang on, let me get rid of myself. Da, da, da. Yeah, here we go. So this is the way we do it. So it's all uh, referenced out in here. You don't have to use this, but you should use something. And if you don't have some better idea, then um, and then and then of course Amco is going to throw another one out there, right? So and then and, but but the yeah hmm, yeah. Uh, listen, this uh, opinions are like uh, I'm just going to be very frank with everyone. Opinions are like <laughs> everyone has one. Okay. Um, but what we've done with 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 my opinion is that we've we've spent 31 years kind of refining it and then building a training curriculum around it. Most people don't do that. Um, there's a, a anchor buoy mind map here from Kevin Frank, except that Kevin Frank now no longer likes anchor buoy. Uh, it was one of the conversations we had yesterday about some of the developers who like to move the furniture. Right? There's people who wake up in the morning, file makers too boring, they want to do something else, so they move the furniture, and so. Uh, as much as I love Kevin Frank, um, and I've talked to him about this stuff before, but he's like, I used to love it. Now I don't like it because I've grown beyond that. I don't need it. I'm blah, 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 blah. So this is the uh, naming conventions that we do here. It explains uh, what's going on. In fact, in this one, we put a vertical score and uh, the name of the this the the. Um, yeah, see, this one's a little different than this one up here. There's an inconsistency in this one right here, too. Most people, I wouldn't catch that. But it's it's a matter of coming up with something you like. Like here, I'm putting the, 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 the table it's based upon, and here it's based upon, it tells you the parent over here. Up here in this screenshot, it's actually backwards right here, right? I think we were just trying to shock about grouping them together. But if you look at what we did here, it's a little bit different. So there have been variations of this, even within RCC. Um, but largely we want to say we want to be able to know what the group is from and the most important thing to me is that there's an a b c like a 42a 42b 42c and that if you look at it you can kind of tell what it's doing without double clicking the relationship it's super super useful so that's a free document um yeah so and i love kevin frank this listen the anchor bully stuff was really invented before i cared about it um it was invented largely in 2003 and four and five and that was really before we were really doing training at rcc so we've been doing training hardcore the last 12 years and the other companies who were do who were doing training have basically exited exited the business of training period yeah so we're running out of time uh, but yeah, so the anchor buoy stuff was invented by, so Kevin Frank, if you go to Kevin Frank's website, FileMaker Hacks, um, website's a little slow, but eventually it'll work. And what will happen is, is that he will tell you how great anchor buoy is, and then he'll tell you how much he, it sucks. And then he'll, then he'll say, you shouldn't use, you shouldn't listen to anything I'm saying because you should make your own decisions in life. And I'm like, that's great. Um, but I'm just telling you, if any of you want me or RCC people to come behind you and help you with the database, we need to understand what you're doing. And what happens, here's here's the reality of what happens. If you build a solution and you use a spider diagram and you hire a professional developer to come behind you, you know what they tell the customer? Throw it away and build it from scratch. It's what, the, what happens. So if you want to avoid the throw it away and build it from scratch conversation, try to do some documentation in flight with it. It would be really great. Questions from Matt Elzo. Uh, Ruben says, can you have an example of two layouts with two togs? Um, I think it's in the current finished goods system, I guess. I mean, really going to make me open my current finished goods system? I guess I could. I mean, this is all going to get censored out one way or the other anyway. A lot of it's classified material. We'll put it down here. I'll go file, manage, database. I mean, Ruben, you want to see, I'm going to, yeah, cat bar if you don't need to see that. Customer notes, you don't need to see that. So, so I don't know. I gave this assignment to the junior engineer. So this is our current production system. 
Here's contacts. It's a little bit big, right? That's why you'd want to probably break it out and spread it out a little bit. This is really what, how it would look like that. That's a little intense in there. Um, we, what we do, we do a lot of PSOS, a lot of offloading, a lot of neat, lean design to keep the speed up on this. And notice it's not very deep. It's really uh, flat in terms of how de deep it goes. So then they're supposed to be doing this other uh, table occurrence for contacts. There you go. This is the new one right here. Uh, yeah. And see, it's, uh, yeah, it's even mislabeled right here, but that this is it. So here's the other one. They just built this. So this is for another layout where we're doing a comparison between two different data systems. So L34 right here, that base table, like if I hit that and I hit Command U, I don't know, is that what it, Command or Control U? Is that what it is? Command or Control U? Yeah. So it's here. There's contacts here, but if I go back up here to contacts, it's right there. It highlighted it. So um, that's where we did it. So there you go, Ruben. Bingo. Trying to get rid of the spider diagram. Can you rename a table occurrence? Yeah, you can totally rename it to the um, new tog to temper. The problem is these things are, have. I mean, FileMaker, okay, you see the names here, but you can have two names that are basically, well, I don't know if you can have two names that are identical here, but at the end of the day, FileMaker, tr all this is managed internally behind with hidden IDs. We've talked about this if you've been watching the add-ons or any of the uh, conversation with uh, Christian Olson on these hidden golden coins from 19.2.2. Um, all this is managed with hidden IDs. And so changing the name and trying to jury rig it so it kind of slides over is going to be very hard to do with FileMaker because FileMaker basically allows people to name anything they want, whatever they want, and, and people can be really bad with names and it doesn't break the application as a general rule. However... Um, <laughs> uh, is that the, the backside of that is that you try to name something identical and then move things over so that nothing breaks. It's going to break because it's not really tied to the name. It's tied to the uh, hidden ID is the problem. So it's it's one of those things like it's FileMaker is too smart for itself, right? So questions from the team TK, Steve, at Matt C, yeah. So, yeah, you guys got to take, if you're off in you know, us, it's it's like Steve is my new Kyle, right? So there we go. You got two of you guys in here now instead of one. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, we try to keep, we try to keep this one thread on track because it's really fast and easy for people to get off in the weeds because there's so many things to talk about. And it's only one hour. I can't educate everyone on everything in one hour. It's just a small slice of the world of FileMaker. So I'm uh, scanning over here, Ruben is talking in whatever other language he's talking in. The pipe character used for table names will create problems with execute SQL. It could, you might want to be careful with that. I don't do execute SQL. Someone, that's okay, so I'm asking the question now. So yes, if Kyle wants to answer that one, because uh, Kyle's a SQL nut, but vertical pipe Kyle, can you use that for execute SQL? Will it cause problems? Uh, the pipe characters used for table names will create problems, yeah, so. So that's kind of, uh, I don't normally use, okay, well, that, okay, okay. So, yeah. So Kyle doesn't know, but yes. Um, yeah, I see that's the problem. Generally, underscores don't cause problems. Vertical uh, pipes, underscores don't generally cause problems anywhere. Vertical pipes can cause problems, uh, but FileMaker, they're allowed in here. What happened is, is FileMaker was started using, you know, reserved characters, right? Some of you will run into these reserved characters. If I go here real quick, I'll cover this, and then we'll be done for the day. Um, is that if you're, uh, let me have a solution that actually works. Is this one working? Browse mode? No, well, kind of not really. Uh, I thought files were going to work. Let me get rid of that. Uh, I need a FileMaker. Let me see. I'll go to contacts. It's probably a junk record. Yeah, this is a junk record. Okay, cool. So this is our finished good system. Remember the one with like all the too many TOs on it? Very elaborate in terms of tracking subscriptions and training and stuff like that. So if I go and I say find mode um, and I click in here, you can get to these what we call special operators. So all these characters here are all reserved, right? You can't use them anywhere. And that's why you don't see an underscore in here. So that's okay. But pretty much underscore 
is what I used. And Nick, of course, Nick today was having another training session. He said, I never use underscore because I don't see the need for it, except Nick doesn't code in any APIs directly with curl, things like that. If he did, he'd know better that you just can't use spaces or, or the stuff explodes and melts down. But like I said, every senior developer, so every senior engineer, they get, they, get, they get to a point and they have their own very specific opinion on things. That's fine. I'm just trying to get people to kind of a very center of the road, kind of a common spot. If you could do Anchor Buoy and you want to decide that you have a better way of doing it, that's fine. Claris does officially recommend it. I will leave the question with that. Um, Peter Geens has a question. Is it a good idea to duplicate the anchor if there are too many child because of the recalculation issues? And so divide. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, we keep talking about that. Um, if you're having performance problems and you're looking at things you can do, you need to get rid of the unstored calculations You need to, on the layout. You need to get rid of the summary fields that you maybe have stuffed on the layout. Um, you need to take a look at these things. And if you have a table occurrence graph that looks like this, that might be a little too fat. Now, once again, we did some optimization here to keep this rolling and not uh, having a major meltdown. But um, that's a big one. That's a big one. And so I would try to not do things that big if you can help it. Um, I would break it down and, uh, but you have to have a functional break break on it. Does that make sense? It has to be functionally logical how you'd break it, right? Like, like if like based on roles in a company, like a sale, like my sales guy has very limited needs. He doesn't care about other training people are watching. He doesn't care about all the other stuff. All he wants to know is how much FileMaker you bought and do you want to buy any more, right? Basic sales stuff, right? So we could give him his own little section with a subset, right? That's how you do it based upon roles and people's needs. You can't, that would be the, it makes logical sense, right? Then you get there and you build a layout for that. You put the anchor, the buoys on there that support it, right? You have the anchor, but the buoys that support that mission. And then if you have tech support, RCC tech support, you send an email to support RCC consulting. You get a tech support team person replying. They're going to need to see something separate. Management team needs to see something separate. So you might have two or three of these. I haven't quite got to the point where we need, well, we have a second one down below, but I have two now, right? So there you go. Uh, Kyle Williams says vertical pipe goes, um, yeah, the so vertical pipe goes um, into SQL. Okay, he thinks he does that. So, yeah, so there's a lot of off-topic questions today, and I don't mind the off-topic questions, but if you're looking for an answer in a reasonable sort of way, shoot us an email to support RC Consulting or take it the off-topic people here, and there are people here who, who hang out a little bit off-topic. This, uh, this understand that... I'm going to reiterate this. The Discord system is uh, to primarily just support the live streams while the live streams are running. If, you po if you're looking for tech support help from RCC, um, or like, for example, you're one of RCC's customers and a server goes down and you have a question and you urgently need help, don't post it to Discord because we don't monitor it after hours, after the broadcast's over. So when it's over, we're going to shut it off. We won't look at it till tomorrow at 1 o'clock. So you need to send an email to support. It goes to an email. It gets fed into our system. It gets triaged. Um, Discord is convenient, kind of social community thing. It's not really a frontline tech support for RCC. All right, well, hopefully I answer all the questions tomorrow. Jacob Taylor will be here. I don't know if Jacob's still around or he got lost or he was off doing work or whatever. Jacob, are you still here? You alive? Yeah, he, well, he's here. Oh, there he is. Hello. Oh, I'm here. Sorry. I had the double mute going because I'm working on stuff. Okay. You're building servers right now for people? I am not. I am managing currently, actually. Oh, you're managing. Wow. It's a part of your yeah. job. It's like the the engineering, uh, whether the technical server, architect, engineering, manager, whatever we call you. So, yeah. yeah. Head, of, head of server engineering. Head of server engineering. <laughs> we that, we yeah, engineer yeah. the servers. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, good. Well, if you have questions for any of us, send an email to support RC Consulting. Tomorrow will be Jacob's conversation about trying to upgrade from really old versions of FileMaker forward. Remember, if you create a giant spider diagram and you try to hire someone to work on it, um, their default behavior may be just build it from rebuild it from scratch because we don't want to have to relearn whatever whoever did whatever they did. Right. So um, I already had that happen. <laughs> Uh, in the last day or two with one of my staff, they're like, eh, this guy wants to upgrade from like FileMaker and really old. And it's like a die. It's a die. Not only is it a spire diagram, it's a dinosaur spire, spider diagram. And he's like, I don't want to like try to fix that because it'll take me weeks to understand what they did. So that's the problem. You got to document it so people understand. It. Otherwise, it makes long term tech support really difficult. All right, folks, I'll catch you tomorrow. Thank you.
play. Calm, cool, collected the quarterback. Great read, good patience. More importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Trying to rally down 10. 925 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot to snap. Stands in, throws it left for Amendola. Reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Ooh. Rolling to the 9. Ball slightly behind him, but Danny makes the grab.